The block is such an instrumental element to learning fundamentals of drawing. It helps us to understand basic structure, uh, three-dimensional space, and core shading principles. Uh, most organic or complex forms can be reduced in some way uh, to block forms. Learning to render them really helps to develop a solid foundation for shading. So it was important that I included exercises on shading uh, block forms in my workbook. So the exercises in my workbook from 2.25 to 2.30 focus on shading block forms. Now, first with only three values on simple blocks, you know, arranged radially around the light source and then composed together and uh, lit by one light source. And then in the next exercise, the block forms are more complex and the value range extends to six, but the approach is essentially the same. These types of exercises that focus on um, learning to render blocks is critical because a primary source of, of many beginner and student shading errors and challenges comes from struggling to decide you know, what part of a form receives what value. And actually, you know, as I had mentioned before, in terms of structure and three-dimensional space, it goes way beyond just shading. The block helps us to uh, address fundamental issues with drawing. Because a lot of times I, I would look at a drawing, right, for students and so on. And the core issue generally, well, one of the core issues generally has to do with structure. And structure is something that has to be addressed in the beginning stages of a drawing. Sometimes when you actually find what is wrong, it's a bit too late because it's in the construction phase. And a block is something, because it's so simple, it enables us to address core things in a very simple and fundamental way. So by the time the form you know, it could start out really simple. And by the time the form is actually uh, uh, developed, it may look completely different from an actual block, even though the drawing really started out in that way. So it's very important that we, you know, develop a sense of basing our drawing on a simple block or a block-like form, because it really will ensure that structural issues are addressed really early. And in the same way with, you know, sensing or conveying three-dimensional space, like, you know, linear perspective is really drawing in a box. You know, and if you really can get that idea or the concept down, a lot of fundamental issues will be resolved. Because, you know, when we're looking at the sides of a block, you know, understanding convey, converging lines, uh, vanishing points. If you look at it in terms of just drawing in a box, it will make it so much easier. And, uh, and likewise with shading, as this exercise uh, emphasizes, it helps us to understand, even with drawing a sphere or drawing a rounded form, the block helps us to simplify the light and shadow. And using that as our guide, then it's easier to address that and uh, make the, the slight nuance adjustments to, you know, convey the roundness or curvature of the form. But it's, it's fundamentally important to start with a block. Now, whether we're rendering with three values or six values, the fundamental process is essentially the same. It's very simple. We first identify the light source, then identify the orientation of the planes, with respect to the light source and then assign the values respectively. Now, the key thing to keep in mind is that the more light facing a plane is, the lighter the value. The least light facing, like this one is facing away, so the deeper the value. And this one is somewhat facing the light source, but not as directly as this one. So you will have a light value, but not as light as this. That is the fundamental core principle. So even when we go to uh, six values. The essential principle is the same, but now we're paying more attention to nuances. So here, uh, I basically have an open box here. So you kind of get a, a wider plethora of values to apply. So here we have this plane, and the assumption is that the lighter plane is most directly facing the light source, because we're assuming the light source is more 
closer to uh, above than to the side. So this one, even though it's facing this way, is not facing the light source as directly as this one. Now, understand that you may decide that this one may be lighter and so on. The key thing is that we be consistent. You want to be able to create a lighting condition that is believable, and that is key. So I could have made this be the lighter one and this be the one that's uh, a bit deeper in value or interchange these two planes in terms of values. But essentially, the overall lighting condition would still be consistent. Now, a key skill uh, to take from this exercise is using how we understand to apply values to adjacent planes to apply that understanding to planes that are spaced away from each other and positioned at random areas around the form. And what I mean by this is, See, it's easy to understand this stepped gradation taking place here. So we know that this plane is directly facing the light source. So it will be lightest, right? Lightest in value. And as the plane faces away, it gradually gets deeper and deeper in value. Now, this is easy to understand, but it, com it, you know, it becomes a source of uh, problems for a lot of students and beginners when... Uh, the planes are arranged all over the place. So, for example, imagine we have, uh, you know, the similar light source here. And now we have planes that are positioned in different places. So, this can be confusing because now we're used to seeing planes uh, directly uh, adjacent to each other but now when we see planes in this way it can be a bit more challenging to apply our understanding you see and if we were to use this understanding to apply it to our planes here it may be a little tricky but a key thing to keep in mind is just to try and stick to the basic orientations so for example uh, imagine a vertical plane and then a plane that is perpendicular to that. So that would be like a vertical plane. This is our horizontal plane, a vertical plane. And then to kind of imagine uh, a plane that is two planes, one that is diagonal is almost like we're looking at a shape like so. So one that is shaped like positioned like this and one that's positioned like this and the horizontal and uh, vertical planes and by considering these four types of uh, positions or orientations if you will and it doesn't matter whether you're uh, positioned at any point around uh, a spherical form this would enable you to simplify the orientation so in other words regardless of the position of a plane on a form or position uh, uh, of a surface on a form try to put it in one of these four positions and this of course could you know apply uh, down here as well so in other words if I'm applying it here I would look at this plane okay and I'll say first of course as I said it's three steps you identify the light source you identify the orientation of the plane and then you assign the value so let's assume that our light source is coming from this direction right then with this, I can say, okay, you know what? First, I'm going to make a separation between light and shadow. So which direction, which orientation will create my lightest value? And I can say, you know what? This one will create my lightest value, right? And then I can say the opposite of that would be, say, this one. So this would create my deepest value. So by identifying these two positions, you've already simplified the process a whole lot because you've already... Uh, remove this and remove this. So between that, it's just a matter of identifying a plane that's next to the shadow and identifying the plane that's next to the light. And that's all you need to do. All of the ambiguous planes, you fit them into one of those two categories. So you find another plane that is close to your light and one that's close to shadow. And you use just those four positions right here and use that to assign all your values. And that's a principle that I've used 
uh, and applying to my shading and it drastically simplifies the shading process and I'm sure if you try it you'll see that it will work as well so let's render this example so we can go through the process together for using this approach to similar forms so uh, let's assume the light source and you as a matter of fact you know you can challenge yourself to use different uh, positions for your light source all right so let's assume our light source is um, uh, is on this side right As I said, the three steps. First, you identify the position of your light source. Then you identify the orientation of your planes with respect to the light source. And then you assign your values. So first, I'm going to identify my, separate my light from shadow. So I'm going to assume this uh, plane is most directly facing the light source. So this is going to be my lightest plane. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to also say this plane is facing this way as well so you know what I can assign the same value to each you can be flexible in that way at least I know it will create some consistency so more than likely no light is reaching this plane so that will be my shadow plane likewise this plane is facing away so I know that this plane will be in shadow So what I'm doing now is I'm separating light from shadow. Now that I've separated light from shadow, no, this will be in shadow, this will be in shadow. I'm also going to deepen this side as well this plane because I'm assuming that you know what this plane is in shadow because it's facing away but the fact that light is shining inside this box I'll assume that some of the light inside here will kind of bounce back and forth and kind of lighten this plane a bit but uh, this plane is not having any uh, reflected light so I'll try to ensure that this plane will be darker than this one and I'm just cross hatching guys I'm just using several layers so now this plane is facing this way and I'll assume that you know what since the light source is coming in this direction it's not as light as this one that's facing the light source directly but it's not in shadow either I'll say this one is kind of facing up so it's going to get some light from this so I'm assuming uh, it won't be as deep as this side since it's facing upwards so similarly with this one So I kind of deepened this plane a bit to make it more consistent uh, with here, but at the same time make it a little bit distinguished from this one because I'm assuming this one is facing more up and we'll get a little bit more light than this. So here is where you're actually practicing how to nuance your values. Now, there's something here that uh, I should note is that and I've mentioned this in tutorials over the years. If you go all the way back, perhaps in my tutorials as early as like 2012, 2011, I've mentioned this key principle is that when you're practicing simple, basic concepts, it's important that you uh, don't focus on things that are too complex. So for example, if you're learning shading, focus on simple forms and don't try to focus on something complex because that will distract you from focusing on shading. So in this case, we're shading block forms, very simple block forms. Uh, it's important that you don't think about gradation so much because we're going to leave gradation for when we're uh, studying rounded forms. So in that way, you know, of course, I do know that gradation can occur on a flat plane. So, for example, uh, as we go deeper in the box, we may have uh, the values be a little bit darker. And as it gets closer to the light, it may get lighter. Same like, you know, here, uh, this flap, right, may actually cast 
a uh, or throw a cash shadow on the side of the box but we're ignoring all that stuff right now i know that uh just likewise if i had a cash shadow here we could assume that it gets lighter as it goes away from the box but we're ignoring all those little nuances at this point and just focusing on learning how to identify planes and assign values to them just to create uh, or model the form so it appears consistent and believable to the eye and that's what's most important so from this point i would advise that you know to exercise is to remove the light source around put the light source here put the light source here and then draw the same form and render it in different ways and what that does is that it, it develops and builds a, a visual library in your mind so you can have an idea of how to address forms like this when it's lit in different positions and that way you can draw and shade effectively from your imagination so you can see that even though this is a really simple exercise it can still be pretty challenging you know when you position the forms uh differently uh, move the light source around the form in different positions and still can really give you adequate practice and you can't practice this stuff enough Okay, everyone, so uh, I hope you liked this video and at least found something you can take from this to apply to your drawing and improve your own drawing process, all right? And remember to give the video a like, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Keep practicing, and I'll see you in the next video.